Hi, everyone. It's Plastic EP coming in from Melbourne, Australia. Let me tell you, first show of 2024. You can't ask for bigger than this, right? I've got Tom Shabilla here, and he's going to tell me about a brand-new James Bond book that he wrote. Right? It's called James Bond and the 60s Spy Craze. Get a look at that and have a look at the cover. I'm going to show you the cover now in a minute. But look how great that is. Congratulations on the uh, book, and that's coming out on April the 2nd. I can't wait this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The new book, uh, yeah, like you said, coming out April 2nd uh, from Applause Books. And yeah, it's called James Bond and the 60s Spy Craze. And the book uh, chronicles the uh, all the 60s James Bond films, uh, the, the canonical uh, James Bond films, uh, including Casino Royale, which came out uh, in 66, and then all the other imitators. So all the American spy films, all the uh, European spy films, everything that aired on television, all the, the Mexican uh, 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 James Bond films, uh, style films. Uh, so so it's, it's, it's a deep dive into that. Sean Connery is my favourite James Bond, right? And I hope Absolutely. I pronounced that right, because some people read it as Sean Connery. I say Sean Connery, right? Sean. I think that's the correct pronunciation. Yeah. But i got to tell you, James Bond was as big as the Beatles, and the Beatles were big fans of James Bond. Right? There's photos of George Harrison with a 007 T-shirt. Yeah, you know, and, and one of the, the things that I, I think from my first book, Primetime 1966, one of the original ideas that I had from, from for that book was Beatles, Bond, and Batman. Yeah, great. Uh, and this is almost completing a trilogy, something covering how... how Batman shaped television in 1966, uh, and now it's really how James Bond uh, influenced film, television, and music uh, uh, throughout that uh, uh, throughout the era. So again, that's what the book really covers from Doctor No to the end of of the uh, 60s. Now, just going to say, right, George Harrison, I believe, owned the DB Austin Martin, and there's a photo of him. Sitting near a pool, I believe, with the 007 uh, logo. The Beatles and James Bond were the biggest things in 1966. You said it and you know it. Now, what I want to know is, all right, I'm being honest. Of all the James Bond movies right in the 60s, from 1962, when the first one came out, right, mm -hmm. Dr. No? Dr. No. Dr. No was number one. Uh the first Ian Fleming novel was Casino Royale, uh, but they had made that into a television show in 1954. Uh, it was a show called Climax, and it was a, a anthology show. So the rights were were held up uh, for years on Casino Royale, and so they just said, you know what, we're we're just going to go ahead and make uh, Doctor No, uh, and and so Doctor No was the first uh, canonical James Bond film. I just want to say, Peter Sellers, he put out that movie, Casino Royale. They might class it as a James Bond movie. But for me personally, the real James Bonds, it wasn't a comedy. So if you take yeah. that out and you start with Dr. No, what's the last Bond movie made to 1970, just before the uh, 60s so, so, changed? Uh, Honor Majesty's Secret Service was, was the last one made in the 60s. On His Majesty's Secret Service with George Lazenby, the Australian, and what I like about him, came from nowhere and he's a Bond. I mean, that is the yeah. most unbelievable thing. So, But that I time period, and to be the last one in the 60s, that's great. Yeah. I have some really great stories about him uh, in uh, in the book. Uh, when he first got the role, he was all about it. Uh, he was a ladies' man. He loved the role of James Bond. By the end of it, he hated being James Bond. Uh and even didn't show up to the premiere, uh, so much so that they begged Sean Connery to come back uh, for one more uh, in Diamonds Are Forever. If you can't beat them, join them. If you're scared to fight it out, watch him and watch out. If you think your girl's a good looker, Take a good look at this guy's dolls. My name's Bond, James Bond. The new Bond. The different 007 on 
on Her Majesty's Secret Service. The new star, the different Bond. The names Lazenby, George Lazenby, and he's got it made. The different Bond woman, the names Rick, Diana Rick. This one's got class and style. <laughs> Telly Savalas, Gabriel Fazetti, and 007 times more excitement. The spy craze was huge in the UK, and that was their export to the world. Like, yeah. this is their guy. You know, yeah. James Bond, no one can beat James Bond. He's <laughs> the man of international, you know, credibility. And it was always... I've got to tell you, one of the biggest events when that a premiere of a James Bond movie came out, the royalty came out for all the royal family, right? Prince mm -hmm. Charles went, everyone went. It was like a big event in the UK. It was them, and this is our hero to the world. It was yeah. that big. In, in the book, I have a really great photo of Queen Elizabeth uh, at the premiere of um, yeah, you, you Only Live Twice. So she came out. You know, again, yeah, it was it was it was a gi giant deal when a James Bond movie came out, uh, and and the book has a lot of those stories of uh, their London premieres, their New York premieres, uh, just the pandemonium that uh, really revolved around it. And also, one thing that I, I talked about quite a bit is you know just even the the merchandising of things that just you know completely got out of uh, uh, you know that that went with it. I'll even show you here. Um, I have the uh, the James Bond secret agent game uh, from 1964. That's fantastic that you own that up a bit. That's unbelievable. And I take it these little plastic pieces that you move around the yep. board, yeah? Yeah, some cool plastic pieces with it. Uh, you know, you got the uh, first one around the board. It's a pretty simple game, but it was pretty fun. This is pretty good too, right? I picked that up. You've seen that? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bond up on the Roger Moore. Uh, and what I yeah, also certainly. got is a pack of playing cards that are James Bond with 007 on it, too. That oh, was cool. a new merchandise. And I've got to tell you, in the 60s, the most famous models, right, of James Bond was called Gilberts. I don't know if you've seen that little plastic yep. packages, but that's yep. very rare to get. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have seen I have seen those. I I, th I think I talk about it in the book and and the uh, the model kit as well of the uh, Austin Martin. Yeah, and also I said the Corgi cars that came out of the sixties that were made in the UK. That was yep. the silver Austin Martin and the guy ejected out of the seat. That was big at my <laughs> primary school. We call that elementary school in the states, right? But that was big yeah. in the playgrounds if you had enough money to buy that. You know the one I'm talking about. It I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes, it was I have, huge. I, there's a, there's a there's a really cool picture of it in my book as well. There's a um, silver one and a gold one. Yeah, when I started writing this book, I I I, I didn't really know where I was going with it. Um, however, I I started uh, looking at James Bond films and just the influence that they had on other spy films and how every spy film after Doctor No was really trying to follow that formula. Uh, and then when I started writing, I, I just could not stop. And I could not stop watching these films. And, uh, you know, it is a, much like my previous book, I said, is a, is a love letter to 1966 television. Uh, this is a love letter to the spy films in the 60s. They're going to ask you with the merchandise, do we know how much, how many millions came in in the first year? In '62, I, I don't know about merchandising exact numbers, but it, um, they were the uh, uh, highest selling toys. '64, '65, '66. That was really the height of it in terms of merchandise. Um, you really had James Bond everything. You had uh, James Bond clothes, James Bond beer, James Bond. Uh, there, there was a, a, a James Bond. A, like a women's clothing line so uh, pajamas underwear uh, 
it was everything. There was anything that you could slap the name James Bond on. It came out during that time. Do you know what amazes me in 2024? Now, the Beatles have so much merchandising, it's unbelievable. There's new Beatle books coming out every day, right? You can't yeah. keep up. Now, I've got to tell you, equal with that is James Bond. There's so yeah. many collectors worldwide that the merchandise doesn't stop. And they keep coming yeah. out with new James Bond stuff because yeah. there were so many Bonds and they take it any way they want and they're very protective of the brand yeah. and of the merchandise because they want it to be like of the best quality you can get. That is a fact. Yeah. And the other thing, James Bond, in the books, uh, it was always very specific what James Bond used, what he wore, what he drove, uh, the products that he used. Uh, so, so that is even a a, um, a whole collector's and a whole uh, lifestyle of, of James Bond that you could find. you got to understand, everybody as they grow up, they have heroes, whether that be the Beatles, whether it be James Bond. But, you know... Doing the subject that you've done there, and I can tell you that cover is fantastic. Who designed the Thank cover you. for you of the book? So, uh, I mean, it, it was by my publisher, Applause Books, uh, but the uh, the painting is originally from a guy, a Robert McGinnis, um, who's a, a fairly famous uh, um, artist. Uh, you would find his uh, uh, work. Uh, that's an original piece. That's a piece from the 60s. And there's a lot of collectors there that collect the James Bond uh, posters. From all mm -hmm. the movies, which is amazing too, if you've got original posters. And they were designed, as I said. Those posters yeah. are so, how can I say, even way out for their time. That, they, that It just freaks me out. They've got James Bond in different pictures in one poster, mm -hmm. right? And it's got all this amazing stuff. The artwork is just totally, it does my head, you know, it's just that great. Yeah, the artwork is, is fantastic on those posters. I, I absolutely love them. Uh, and and also the um, and, and and also during the time these other films were out were trying to out James Bond James Bond, so all the other posters were doing the same thing. All the other posters were trying to make it a, a, a bigger uh, explosion on the scene. Uh, nobody made a film like a James Bond movie. I mean, they were nothing was as good as a James Bond movie, but. That's what they were all trying to do. That's like right. the Casino Royal poster where the woman has all the yeah. artwork on her body, right? Yeah, and holding a From, gun. That, that was Twiggy, the model, uh, yeah. on, on the on the poster. So Casino Royale was put up by MGM, not United Artists. Uh, and again, that was acquired uh, from the earlier copyright that somebody had acquired to put Casino Royale on television. Um, it was originally planned to be a straight up James Bond movie. And actually there were rumors that they were trying to get Sean Connery for the movie, but by 66 uh, spy spoofs were the rage. So people were tripping over each other to put out the next spy spoof film, not the next super spy film, like a James Bond, making it serious. Uh, so, that's what that's when they came out with the uh, the idea. There were six different directors. Uh, you know, Woody Allen was in it. Uh, um, Orson Welles, uh, Peter Sellers, uh, David Niven. Um, it, it was a mess. The film. I feel the film was a mess, and it, it's it's confusing to watch. Uh, but uh, and, and United Artists did not get the rights to Casino Royale uh, until years and years and years later. Uh, when they made it finally with uh, uh, Daniel Craig. Now, I've got to say about the spy craze, because you hit the nail on the head. In the 60s, right, early 60s, as I said, once Dr. No came out, then what happens is here in Australia and the world, the TV got the spy craze, right, like the man from UNCLE. Yep. That was such so, a big uh, show here in Australia. Yeah, man from UNCLE was huge, and even, uh, as you can see, the man from UNCLE uh, game as well. Uh, it's the Man from Uncle uh, card game, uh, so so that also uh, was was big with merchandising. Uh, you would see the stars of Man from Uncle on uh, Teen Beat magazines, uh, Teen Beat, Tiger Beat, things like that. So so again, uh, another giant show, Man from Uncle. Um, you know, you had uh, the Avengers. That's right. Uh, they brought back the show Secret Agent Man, uh, which yeah. was known as Danger Man in yeah, England. Huge. I don't know what it was in. 
uh, Australia. Danger Man, that's what it was. And that was huge. You could buy annuals. Yeah, Secret Agent Man in America. Uh, you know, then then again, then starting the spy spoofs of James Bond. Exactly. Uh, things like that. Every year you could buy the annual. An annual was a book that was on James Bond or the man from Uncle. Mm -hmm. But have you ever seen this book? Bond versus Bond? No, I don't think I've ever seen that one. Right? That looks like an amazing book. And here's what I'm talking about, the poster. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's an awesome. That, that, the Dr. No poster is awesome. How long did it okay. take you to write the book? So it took me about a year. Uh, I, I, I started writing in the summer of 2022. And uh, in that time, uh, I acquired my agent, Lee Sobel, uh, and uh, we started pitching the book idea and Applause Books picked it up. And uh, then that really put me on the clock to really uh, start knocking out the book. And I, 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 uh, I finished it um, you know, th th this past summer. And, uh, you know, we've, we've been in the editing process for a little bit. Uh, but again, it is uh, scheduled to come out uh, April 2nd. So it, it, is, it has been a, a relatively short window of time in terms of publishing. But uh, again, it's, it's, it was just one of those labors of love that when I started writing, I couldn't stop. I needed to finish this book and, and I needed to get it, get my ideas on paper. Well, I need to read it, but I've got to tell you, if people want to pre-order the book, can they pre-order from now? Absolutely. absolutely. Uh, so Applause Books, it is on Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble, where other fine books are sold. I can't wait. This is a 11 out of 10 for me. And I love the title. I love how you get into the merchandise, you get into Bond, and you bring yeah. them back to the 60s. That's the most important yeah. thing. Don't you agree? Absolutely. I, you know, again, th this is my my wheelhouse of, of, of the 60s. And uh, again, just everything that, that went into that era, uh, I, I absolutely love. You know, we've talked about the monkeys. We've talked about Batman. We've talked about uh, the Beatles quite a bit. Uh, and, I, and I'm and I'm glad that I can come on and talk about James Bond. Uh, that this was so international that this was not something that was relegated to England. This is not something that was relegated to the United States. Uh, it, it, like I said, it, it went to uh, went to Australia. Uh, it went to uh, uh, Latin America. Uh, so, and I'll I'll pull this up. Uh, so in Mexico, uh, there was a uh, Mexican professional wrestler. Uh, by the name of El Santo. And El Santo uh, fought monsters in his films. He made films. He had a comic book line. Uh, he fought monsters in films. But he also put out spy films in 1966. So this guy right here, uh, El Santo, he always wore his silver mask. Uh, he, he traded in his uh, monster slaying duties for a James Bond role. Uh, so Everybody was on this spy craze in, in 1966. Yeah, that's unbelievable. And I love the title of your book, right? James Bond in the 60s spy craze. As I said, go and pre-order the book now. Don't wait. Because at okay. least that way, it's going to get out there. And, you know, yep. James Bond is totally international and worldwide. It's like one of the biggest topics out there. The, the 60s can't be without James Bond. No, like the 60s no. can't be without the Beatles. And, you know, it's it's so amazing that now you go on these digital platforms, right, like Netflix and so forth out there in the States, and there's one actual platform now that has got every single James Bond there just to watch, yep. one after the yep. other. I mean, someone gave me a DVD box set of James Bond. It's got nearly all of them except maybe yep. the last two. <laughs> movies which I thought that was great yeah, and it's incredible that they're still out there you know there's as, as many knockoffs as there were for James Bond uh, James Bond is the original and James Bond will never die and I've also got the Blu-ray right I've started collecting the Blu-ray I've nearly got the whole collection and I don't I don't compare formats when I'm watching Blu-ray I'm watching Blu-ray when I'm watching DVD I'm watching <laughs> DVD when I'm watching it on my phone, right while I'm sleeping, that's even better because you're not <laughs> you're not dealing with you know physical things. You just turn on your phone and watch it. I mean, how great is that now? The technology there isn't anything that you can't watch. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, it is. You know, and um, yeah, no, it, it, it's I I agree. It, it is incredible, and 
you know, and, and I, I would have, however, I would have liked to have been able to uh, uh, see them in the theater at the time. But, and I have some really great, and again, in the book, I have some really great stories about that, about uh, just the, the the fandom that went into it, a uh, number of uh, premieres, uh, 24 hour festivals, uh, things like that. So, again, it is, uh, I, I, I think it's pretty groovy and I think it's uh, uh, absolutely worth checking out. Congratulations on the book, Tom. Everyone go out and pre-order the book. And as I said, there's no bigger than James Bond 007. Thank you, Plastic.